pay in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So, glory to Jesus. Our God is an awesome God. Welcome to our wonderful uh, service. Um, this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful afternoon. You know, we just had a wonderful time at the church. It was good. I was in Mark chapter 4. I was in Mark chapter 4 at church. So, it's where I want us to go. So, today I just want to, to teach. So, Mark chapter 4. If you turn your Bible to Mark. Mark chapter four, right? It's the parable of the of the saw. It's the parable of the saw. Now, why is this important? You know, on Thursday the Lord gave us a word. The word he says the yoke of um, delay has been broken, right? So I felt, you know, that today it was important to really focus on on hearing God which is very, very important, just to focus on what, what God is saying, just to hear what are you saying to us. So I started in Mark 4, 3. So I want to talk about, you know, really want to go deeper into the parable of the sower. Hearken, behold, they went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up, and some fell on a stony ground, where it had not much it. And immediately, I want you to see, there was not much it. And it made, immediately it sprang up because it had no death of it. But when the sun was up, it was caused. And because it had no root, it withered away. Hey, this is bad. Right? And some fell among thorns. And thorns grew up and choked it. And it yielded no fruit. That's not good. You see, I want you to take note. There was nothing wrong with the seed. The seed was, was awesome. And other fell on good ground. Did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, some in hundredfold, right? So the, the, the soil was, you know, the seed was good. You know, the seed was awesome. It was phenomenal. But it's different types of ground, right? Now, verse 9. And he said unto them, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. This is Jesus now. He, he, he first of all is addressing a crowd, right? By the seaside. It's a great multitude. He is teaching them, right? He is teaching them. No, when you, you, you are teaching somebody, what you are doing is you are countering philosophies that have been there before. Right? Remember I said this meeting is important, right? You see, what? will cause the seed of God to grow inside of us is this, when we are willing to have those um, philosophies that we know, to be confronted, to be changed. You see, the trailblazers, the people that God is gonna use that are going to arise and do great exploits in the kingdom of God. You see, you, you have to be somebody that has, a philosophy can be challenged. A philosophy is the way you think, it's your belief system, is what you understand about the church, glory to God. See, Jesus here, He's the son of the living God, right? He is teaching them. Whatever Jesus was teaching them, remember his message, the message of Jesus. You know, we, we need to come out of what is happening in the church. See, the message of Jesus wasn't prophecy. Mm -mm. What people are going for, it wasn't healing. Mm -mm. Though, Jesus, though Jesus healed the people, that was not his message, right? To heal. Mm -mm. It was not financial prosperity. That was not his message to get people blessed financially. Mm -mm. It was not faith. That was not his message for people to grow in faith. It was not grace, right? That was not his message. His message was about the kingdom. The kingdom of God had come. So when he says the sower goes to sow a seed, right? So he is a message about the kingdom. Now he is coming to earth in a religious system. Now, these were people that were very religious. So because they were very religious, when they saw, you know, in England, it's awesome. It's just the raining, you know, so the, the blessing of the Lord is upon us, glory to God. He said, so when he is sowing this seed, oh, wow, when he is sowing this seed, it is a kingdom principle. So he is challenging philosophies that have been there for a long time, right? Right. Verse 9. And he said unto them, he that had ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 10. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked him of the parable. The crowd, the multitude had been dismissed. 
Now he is left with the 12 people, right? He is left with the 12 people and that's a group of people. And he said unto them, unto you, it is given to know, this is what I was talking about, right? The mystery of the kingdom of God. Now let, let, let me go deeper in. You see, what I normally teach even in the church, I teach the kingdom, you know? Kingdom marriage, kingdom finances, kingdom children, kingdom this, kingdom that. Why? Because God has brought us into a kingdom, right? So unto you it has been given to know the kingdom. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 6, 60, Matthew 6, 33. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. All these things shall be added unto you. Now, when he is left with these 12 disciples and a few, few other people from the crowd, he says, unto you it has been given to know the mystery, the secret. What if you don't understand the secret of the kingdom? Remember when Jesus came, there were many people that were, were religious, right? That were going to the synagogue or they were going to, to, to the church. It was not the church, it was the synagogue, right? They were going there. You are not to be the person or the people that are just going to church. Mm -mm. We shouldn't be. Glory to God. Unto us it has been given to understand the kingdom, the mystery of the kingdom. See, everything that we have to do is from a place of understanding of the kingdom so that we can operate in the supernatural where God wants us to be, right? Right, right, right. Let's go deeper into the word of God. Unto you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, are done in parables. I want you to take note. You see, if, you, if we go to the house of God, right, everything can become a parable. Right? When something becomes a parable, when God is saying something, then we have no understanding of what he is saying. God is saying, no, I want to bring you up so that you can have an understanding of what I am saying. Now, verse 12, he begins to explain. That thing they may see and not perceive. Right? Something wrong. When you begin to see and not perceive, to see and not perceive is, you see the power, you see the glory, but there is no manifestation. Right? You can go to church, and ah, the sermon was powerful, but there is no perception, there is no perceiving, there is no, you, 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 don't, you do not get pregnant with what you saw, right? What Jesus is inviting them into is, I want you to see so that you can perceive, right? To perceive, you see and perceive, right? Now, again, the second part, and hearing, they may hear and not understand. Do you know you can hear, like right now you are hearing, right? You're hearing what I'm saying, but not to have an understanding, right? That they can hear, but not have an understanding, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins shall be forgiven. And he said unto them, verse 13, know ye not this parable? How then will you know all parable? He's saying this parable is the standard. It is the foundation, glory to God. Now verse 14, the sower soweth the word, now, the seed now is the word. Right? It says what the sower was sowing was the word of God. Now, let's go to 15. Right? And these are they which, these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, I want you to take note, they heard the word. Saturn cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. I want you to take note. Imagine. The wayside, right? It says the falls of the air, they came and devoured. Now the interpretation here, it says, Satan came and took away the way. It was from their, their heart. Now, what I was talking about is this, that if our philosophies, right, our understanding of what God is doing in our time is based on religion, Right, or it's based on what I explained earlier that God did not come to teach on faith. He did not, Jesus did not come to teach on faith. He did not come to teach on grace. He did not come to teach on financial prosperity. He did not come to teach on healing, but He came to teach on the kingdom of God. He came to teach about the kingdom of God, right? So now, if I don't have an understanding, right, when I'm approaching God, I already approach God with my own solutions, with my own hands. When he saws that word, right? When the word of God is coming to me, my philosophy begins to fight what God is saying. Let's go to Colossians 2, 8, right? We, we, we shall come back here. Let's go to Colossians 2, verse 8. 
Colossians 2, Colossians 2, verse 8. Glory to God. Colossians 2, verse 8. Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm Roskele Ah, See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental forces, spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. Now, I'll, I'll take it again. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, right? Which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ, right? Right, 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 right. So say to it, he's talking about a deceptive philosophy. Now, here as Jesus begins to explain the, the first soil, these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. And when they have heard, Satan came and immediately. Philosophy is a way of thinking, right? What the enemy will normally use is how I think. So when that word comes, that God is destroying the spirit of delay, the yoke of delay is being destroyed. That is the way that the sower has sown, right? But if I have a certain philosophy, a way of thinking, which is contrary to Christ, the enemy will steal that way. These are they that fell on the wayside. I want you to take note, they heard the word, but the devil came immediately, immediately. You know, God can say something to us and then the enemy would come immediately. I was sharing today at church, there was a testimony that I was sharing at church. Now in this testimony, no, I was talking about hearing God, you know. I one day I was working at this hospital. As I was working at this hospital, um, you know, so I was working at this hospital. There was this uh, other young lady that I used to work with. She was driving, going to the same hospital for a night shift where I was working. So as, uh, as, as she was driving, she was praying. As she was praying, you know, she needed to make a decision about going to church, right? She says, Lord, I don't just want to go to Open Door Christ Center. I want you to confirm it to me, right? If that is the place where I want, where I should go. Now, the spirit of the Lord, started talking to him. This is her testimony. This is what she told me. Says, you know, God said he placed me and, um, you know, under you, right? So as she was going there, the Lord begins to talk to her that, listen, I placed you under, under love. She had been my student for a long time. Now she comes to that hospital. I want you to take note. If she has a philosophy, now she's been at a church before she was at another church, you know, but if she has a philosophy of this world, you know, the philosophy of this world, she is not African, you know, she's um, from the Caribbeans, you know, she's not from an African background, you know, but a philosophy of this world, what can it do? You know, you cannot associate with Africans, you cannot do this, you cannot do that, right? That is a philosophy. When you have a philosophy on something of healing, you believe, you believe that God has to heal you this certain way. And if you have that philosophy, when the sower comes to sow a way, you might not hear that way. So as she is driving to work, you know, she doesn't know I'm there. I'm working. There is a medication that I need. She worked in intensive care unit. I was working in an acute medical unit. So as I was working there, it's a hospital that I rarely go to work to anyway. So as I was working there, all of a sudden, I'm looking for this medication. I cannot find it. When she was coming to work, she was praying for direction from God. Now, what's this? I get home, you know. You know, I, I can't find the medication. So what the spirit of the Lord tells me to do, go to intensive care unit and start, you know, because you, 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 you get into the system, you get into the computer to find out where that medication is. Now it was an intensive care unit. So I don't even know where the intensive care unit was. So I had to follow direction. As I enter into the intensive care unit, she is there. She is surprised. As you know, I was just been asking God for direction, where to go, you know, which church to attend. Now, what's this? We connect. As we connect, she comes to church. And she, she continues in church and everything else. Then years later, you know, about a year afterwards, she get, you know, she get cancer, a very aggressive form of breast cancer. Very, very aggressive form of breast cancer. I want you to take note, philosophy, you know, she is medically trained, she's praying, she's believing God. But as we were praying, there was one of the ladies is here today. As we were praying, one day I hear one of my evangelist sister who is here, sister evangelist, you know, she, she talks to me, she says, Pastor, God has given me an anointing for cancer. 
This is somebody, you know, from nowhere, she starts talking about God has given me an anointing for cancer. She doesn't know that somebody is going through the same, you know, problem. Now, this lady, when she was praying, going to work, the church where she attended, two people died of the same cancer. There was a spirit that was just destroying people, ladies from breast cancer. They prayed. I want you to take note. They believe. But what's this? They did not believe in the healing anointing. They did not believe in the healing power. The sower goes to sow a seed. But what she had done on her own, she was seeking that it's time for me to, to transition, to move out from where I am. Glory to God. And the Lord connected her with Pastor Lord. I don't believe in being sick. I don't believe in sicknesses or diseases. I believe in divine healing. Now, that other church, they did not believe in divine healing. What's this? The sower goes to sow a seed. Now, she is preparing her heart through prayer. Let's go deeper. You see, here yeah, what this is what I'm, I'm suggesting today. Do you know countless times when we are praying, the philosophy now, I'm dealing with it. Countless times when we are praying, we already have solutions. We are not seeking God. Hey, when she was praying, she was seeking God. She did not just want to make an emotional decision that I'm going to go to open door Christ and I'm going to submit under Pastor Law. Mm -mm. No, she is praying to seek God for a solution. You see, the challenge that many of God's children struggle with is this. There is nothing wrong with the seed. Mm -mm. The seed is powerful. It's enough to produce. But a philosophy, you see, say to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy. Sometimes there are things we have heard at church which are not biblical. That when the word of God comes in, when the sower comes to sow a seed, that philosophy that is already in your heart and God is trying to talk to you, that philosophy begins to fight the word of God. It begins to fight the seed. So whenever you are praying as a child of God, you see, that's why you know, every time when I'm praying, let me tell you something. I learned this. I don't pray with solutions. Mm -mm. I pray with a heart that is humble towards God so that when the seed comes to me, I can receive that seed. But if I already pray with a solution, a solution might be a philosopher, right? It might be a philosopher. Now, she had, she came to open door Christ Center. The seed was sown. When she made, she made a decision. Now, she came to open door Christ Center. She came out of that place, right, where others had died, right? So she came to open door Christ Center and she, the cancer was very aggressive. They told her that. So as I'm talking to evangelist Google, from nowhere, she tells me that, ah, you know what, bro? God has given me an anointing to heal cancer. You know, she probably might not even remember this. God has given me an anointing to heal cancer. No, as a pastor, I'm connecting one plus one. There is somebody struggling with this. They come to our Bible study. It was a Thursday. Thursday evening. As they come to a Bible study, I'm praying, interceding in tongues, because I like to lead intercession. And then the Spirit of the Lord says something. Let people pray two by two. Let them pray two by two. Guess what? Google prays God, God, God pays Sister Google and this other lady, you know, who's going through a challenge. They are paid together. They start praying together, all right? As they start praying together, let me help you out what happened. They went there. After she had done, she was meant to have about four or six cycles of chemotherapy. She had only had the therapy. She didn't want to go for chemotherapy anymore. They looked and checked and everything. You know, they could not find that cancer cell anymore, even up to today. That is two, two, two years later. You know, she's here. She's healthy. But I want you to take note here. This sow was to sow a seed. I want you to take note. I heard when Sister Gugu was talking about the, the that God has given her a healing anointing. This sow is somebody who is anointed, right? Is carrying a word, a seed. But if there is a philosophy here, a philosophy which is bad, it can counter that healing. Many of God's children, you know, they miss out on the word of God producing results in their life. Since the devil come in immediately. Now, what you can do is that you can look at Sister Google, decide that you don't like it. Or you can look at somebody, decide, mm, not this one, not nice for this one. Mm, what can they tell me? Yet that is the soul. That is how the enemy begins to steal the seed. You are looking at people based on where they come from, based on their agenda, right? Based on the agenda, you have to find out that the sower goes to sow a seed. Listen, the sower is a person. You will never see God here. 
right? But what you are going to see is people that are sent by God, but there are decisions that you have to make, radical decision, you know, that you have to make. She made that decision to step out. She made the decision to, 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 to place herself in another ministry. She made a decision, but once this, I had to hear what that sister who was saying, oh, I'm the pastor of the church, I have to be the one laying hands up there, I have to be, no, 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 no. So God, when he showed my other sister the dream that I've given you the anointing to heal cancer. So I didn't connect the two. Glory to God. Hearing the word of God. The sower saw it the way. And these are they by the wayside. When the word is sown, when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word which was sown in their hearts. Now we are talking about healing, right? What of other stuff in life? Take note. There was no problem with the seed. What of other stuff in life? What of other stuff in life? It's very important that when you are praying, right, and the word comes to you, what is God saying? So the thing that you need to fight, say, philosopher, I don't have a philosopher. May I believe what the word of God tells me? I don't, I don't have my own philosopher. Even any person when they are preaching, they are thinking, Lord, what are you saying through that person? There are times God has spoken to me to, through people that uh, I really don't believe. Their, their doctrines are way off then God can release that way. You see, because I, I, I made a decision ages ago. What was that decision? Not to know people after the flesh, but to know them according to what is inside of them. Because the sower can be anyone. Here, the sower was Jesus. The crowd was dismissed. And when the seed is sown, the devil cometh immediately. The devil cometh immediately. The devil will always use what is in the heart to steal the word. Let's go to the next step. Glory to God. Now, verse... 16. These are they, likewise, which are sown on a stony ground, who when they have heard the word, I want you to take note, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Right? <laughs> See, they receive the word with gladness. They were glad. See, now, let, let me warn you. It's good to go to church and be excited when the word is preached, but after you have heard the word, what are you going to do? We say it on Thursday, right? The yoke of delay is being destroyed. What are you doing with that word? Glory to God. See, you can receive the word with gladness. But what are you going to do with that word that you have received? So they, they, they heard the word. These are likewise which are sown on a stony ground, which when they have heard the word, immediately they received it with gladness. See, they were glad. Oh, they are the anointed. Hey, are, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Shut the heavens, speak in tongues. Shut up. Blah, 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 blah. Yay. Today, a church, woo, glory to God. Today, a church, the word was strong, you know? But what are you doing with that way? Are you making a demand of that way? Are you making a demand of that way, glory to God, to produce results? We have to make a demand of the word of God, right? So that it can produce results in our lives, right? It's one thing to hear. It's another thing to cooperate with the way, to cooperate with the way that is given. Imagine if I did not hear what Sister Gugu was saying about the anointing on Yili. Imagine if that lady did not hear that I placed you under Pastor Lou. Imagine she would be dead today. And what would be the Pastors that sometimes lack revelation. The Lord took him. You know, you know, God scattered. You know, I heard I was at a funeral yesterday. He says, ah, God might have needed a, a nice rose in his garden in heaven. It devil is a lie. Glory to God. That lady could have died and left a, a, a teenage daughter on her own. No, that was not God's plan. Glory to God. But you see, I, I want you to take note. You see, you can receive the word with gladness, right? You receive the, the word with gladness, but these are they that are sown on a stony ground. So you have to address your heart. How is your heart like? You address the ground. The ground was stone, right? They received with gladness. Now let's find out what Jesus says here in verse 17. And have no root. And have no root. You know, when you come into the house of God, what God will normally do, he will connect you with somebody who has roots, who are rooted in the things of God. Let me, let, let, let me read it. You know, I need to go deeper here. You see, whenever we come into Christianity, we come as babies. 
Even ministers of the gospel, I believe I'm addressing great women of God today that are anointed to do great things in the kingdom, right? So when we come into the house of God, sometimes we don't have roots, right? We don't have roots. Now, so God himself will bring people that have roots. I want you to take note. What God did with the other sister, God knew that I was rooted in the, in the healing ministry. So she needed to make a decision that I've placed you under pastor law. She needed to make that decision. You see, it is a decision that you make. No one can force you. Nobody can force you. you see, Jesus never forced anybody, glory to God, to be under him. But it's a decision that you make yourself. Let me tell you something. You see, God will often bring somebody who has roots, somebody who is grounded. And you come, you hear the word, but you are not rooted. When you are not rooted in the things, the enemy will come in. Because what the enemy is after is after the word. Glory to God. So he will connect somebody without roots. Let me show you. Let's go to Ruth 1. Ruth 1, verse, verse 15, right? Ruth 1, verse 15, right? Ruth 1, verse 15, if you are there. I want to talk about the rooting system, right? Luke said, Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. That is Naomi, right? Go back with her. But the Ruth replied, don't. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. You see, Naomi had Ruth. Ruth saw that she placed herself under. Naomi, there is a trend that is in the house of God today that very few preachers are addressing. It needs to be addressed. In the house of God, not everybody is equal. Mm -mm, there is a hierarchy. Glory to God. You have to understand. There are some that are generals. There are some that are captains. There are some that are, are lieutenants. So you have to come to the revelation of this. See, Ruth here understand that Naomi is a general. Now, Ruth says, no, don't ask me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. There are some people that have roots. I want you to take note. If it was you or me, but me, I know I would have followed Naomi, you know, in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> Glory to God. But if it was other believers, Naomi lost her husband. Naomi lost her children. Why will I want your God to become my God? Why will I want your people to become my people? Why will I want this? See, Ruth saw something, right? Let's go back to, 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 to Mark 4. I've got two Bibles open. We'll come back in. Unto you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without all these things are done in parables. Verse 12, that thing they may see and not perceive. You see, Ruth saw what was in Naomi. Even Naomi no longer saw what was in herself. What do you see that is in people? Do you know you can be with somebody that can change your life, but because you don't see, right? They are rooted, you don't see. So I, I can also hear from God. You know, we all hear from God. We are in the house of God, we all can approach the throne. Of, no, the things of God don't operate this way. Right? They don't operate this way. One day I was talking to a general in the faith. So I was talking to this general in the faith. I said, listen, when you open your eyes, your father and mother, they knew God. That your father never did anything crazy. They made money through sacrifices and witchcraft or the occultic. Your mother knew God. So when you open your eyes, so you have roots. You see, you are rooted there. Right? What's this? There are some today, you get into faith, right? But where you come from, where you come from is bad, right? There is no roots there. So when you come into the house of God, God will connect you with somebody who might be rooted. That person might not have money, might not even have a cow on their name. But what do you see? Their life might be bad, but what do you see? That is the soul. That is the person with the root system. That is the one that will help you also to be rooted because they are rooted. What do you see? Are you getting what I'm talking about? The person would have said, ah, God is breaking the yoke of delay. The yoke of delay is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. And then you are excited. But do you see what is God saying to you? Some might, be, might have roots. So if you don't see those roots, you, see, you have to pray, not help me to see. Even people, you see, philosophy, the philosophy would be, well, 
Pastor Lomubi, I'm trying to get connected to Pastor Chris. You know, Pastor Chris is my role model. I'm trying to get connected to Andrew Womack. You know, Andrew Womack is my model. I'm trying to get connected to T.T. Jakes. Glory to God. That is how God doesn't work that way. I'm afraid, you know. I'm afraid he, he doesn't. Glory to God. Mm -mm. You see, in these elementary stages, God might connect you with nobodies. So you need to learn how to pray. So these are, they, they received it with gladness. Glory to God. They received that word with gladness, but they had no roots, right? Ruth saw Opa. What did Opa do? She went back. She went back. Opa was also good. She was a good daughter in law. But Naomi said, no. You know, you can't, I cannot give you any sons anymore. She went back, but listen to what Ruth said. Mm, where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, even if death separates you and me. You know, this, this was Ruth. It was a statement of faith. She recognized her destiny was connected to somebody who is rooted so that she can also be rooted. Can't understand Christians. They died before their time. You see, because you see, the sower came to sow the seed. Ah, if God wants to heal me, he can heal me in that, in that church. You know, in the church where the other lady came from, two ladies, they died. It was not dead that time. Let me tell you one of the ladies that died. You know, I want to just paint a picture. No, I'm not saying can come to open door Christ and that we deal with all these cancers. No, but I want to paint a picture. I was working in another hospital. Now, when I was working in that other hospital, the other lady, I ended up myself looking after, after him. It was a different hospital from the one that I mean. She was in a side room. She had an aggressive form of cancer. I went in to pray with her. So as I went in to pray with her, she had the faith to heal, to be healed. She had the faith. But every person that came into the room, let me tell you something. They all had unbelief written off. Even some of them were pastors. You know, they will be coming in because they, they, they had not spent time being rooted in healing. I mean, they like you, that this one was going to die. They were just there, just to, to, to comfort her as she was passing. They'd already given up hope. She died. She died before her time. It was not her time, but she was in a wrong place. That place was not rooted in healing. Glory to God. You see, the soul goes to sow a seed. There was no roots in that department. Because there was no roots in that department, you know, she died. She left her children. She died. Because that is what the devil comes to do. John 10, 10, right? We all know John 10, 10, right? The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come so that they might have life and have it more abundant. The context of John 10, 10, do you know what he's talking about? He's talking about the word, right? He's talking about the word. The word of God. So the thief is still, the thief steals the word. The thief stops the word from operating. Glory to God. That is the enemy. The devil will steal the word. And he uses philosophy. What you think? When God says something to you, I've placed you there. Go there. When you see something in the Naomi, hold on to it. What do you see? Because as you do so, you will grow in roots. That's why you have to be radical. When you walk with God, whatever you hear, you want to pray, like you want to come to God, you know, like Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people that are called by my name, if they could humble themselves, you know, humble themselves, you know, you want to come to God empty. As you come to God empty, then you're going to hear God. You are going to hear God. Even preacher, let me tell you what I do with preacher. I don't criticize. What I do is I pray. I pray he comes That's I seek God. When I seek God and I listen to somebody two minutes or three minutes, I know whether they are sent from God or they are not. See, you spend time seeking God. You don't allow to be hyped up, right? When you are hyped up, you can come out and the enemy can destroy. These are they that fell on the wayside. The devil came immediately. Ruth, Naomi lost everything. What happened? They were hyped up. There was no food in Bethlehem. They went to Moab. That is where the devil was. There was a spirit of death there. Then they died. It was not God's plan. But God turned everything around. You know, Ruth was not God's first choice. It was not God's first plan. There are some people that we think, ah, God had called. You know, there was a lady, Catherine Coleman, who came up in the healing ministry. It was not God's first plan. There are others that were busy. 
glory to God. There are times the enemy will come in, in Jesus' mighty name. He will come in, no, don't go to Moab. Don't do this, but you see, I'm already, my philosophy, there is hunger here. There is something there in Moab. If I go to Moab, if I date that guy, if I date that young lady, if I invest in there, already you have a philosophy. So when you are praying, you are dragging God alone. This is this will preach. You are dragging God alone to more. God says, no, I'm not going to more. But when you come to the end of yourself, I'm going to pick up the pieces. I'm going to come again. I'm going to use Ruth. From Ruth, then something will come out of you, Naom. But that is not my blood. Then Naom ends up losing everything. Anyway, let's go back to the way. Now, what's this? <laughs> Verse 18. These are they which are sown among thorns, such as they hear the word. I want you to take note. These are they that are sown among thorns. It says they hear the word, right? They heard the word, right? And the cares of this world, the philosophy, right? The cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the last of other things entering in, choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. The cares of this world. Right? These days, what did I say? God did not come to preach prosperity, right? It doesn't mean God does not want us to prosper. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. Glory to God. But right now at the churches, what is happening? What is happening these days in our churches? You know, we are talking about manifestation. We are talking about money. Listen, I hate being broke. I'm, I'm against poverty. I hate being sick. I'm against the sickness. I don't like being sick. I don't believe in being sick. I don't believe in being poor. But that is not what God came to preach about. God came to preach about the kingdom of God. That's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom, right? When I begin to seek the kingdom, then healing comes, you know? When I begin to seek the kingdom, if financial blessings come, great, awesome. But that is not what I'm after. Glory to God. I'm after Jesus Christ. I want to know him. I want to grow in him. That should be our mindset that we want Jesus. We don't want the things that he's given to us, but we are bold enough to begin to speak to things and call things into existence, right? But here, these are they, glory to God, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the last of other things entering in, choke the word and become unfruitful. I was talking to this young, he was 24, year old, 24 years of age in that particular time when I was talking to him. He says, no, 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 no. I need to start, first of all, enjoy my life before I get serious with the things of God. Do you know there are many people even, some are in their 50s, some are in their 40s. Says, I first of all need to enjoy my life. Then I can get on. Says, the last of other things, the cares of this world. It came in, it choked the word. Glory to God. So we have to begin to, to look at the cares of this world. The rich young ruler. Now, he came to Jesus. Says, what can I do to have eternal life? What can I do to enter into the kingdom of God? Jesus looked at that young man. He laughed at him and says, listen, one thing, thou lackest, go sell everything you have. Give to the poor. Come follow me. Glory to God. What did he say? He went away sad. says he went away sorrowful because he was very wealthy. You know, and Jesus looked at the disciples and says, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. It's like a camel, you know, going through the eye of the naked. Jesus was not denouncing riches. It says, when you begin to trust on the things of this world, when you start leaning on the things of this world more than on leaning on God, then that weight is choked. These are they that fell on a thorny area. You see, the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the last of other things entering in. You see, you hear the word at the church, but there are other stuff that you are thinking about. Your heart is all over the place. You are over there. You are thinking about this. You are thinking about that. The enemy will use that to chalk. says to chalk the word. Stop the word from, 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 from producing. You have to be intentional. When you hear the word of God, glory to God, because the enemy will use the things around you to choke the word. If he does not get you through the rooting system, he will come. <laughs> he will come with the case of other stuff. Glory to God. Then verse 20. These are they which are sown on good soil, such as they hear the word. They hear the word. They are sown on good ground, such as they hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. And some 30, some 60, and 100 fold. They bring forth fruit. Father, we thank you. That was Ruth. She had the way. She laid hold of that way. 
Now, let's go to Ruth 3 as I round up. Ruth 3, right? Ruth 3, verse 1. One day, Ruth, Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi said to her, my daughter, I must find a home for you where you will be well provided for. Now, Boaz, with whose women you have worked, is a relative of ours. Tonight, he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash, wash, put on perfume and get dressed in your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down in when he lies down, not the place where he is lying, not the place. I want you to take note because it's about producing now 30, 60, 100 fold. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. He will tell you what to do. I want you to hear verse 5. I will do whatsoever you say. Ruth answered, I will do whatsoever you say. What happened to Ruth? She produced 30, 60, 100 fold. How? She was willing to leave more, which was a cursed environment. She saw something in Naomi. And it was Naomi who said, Amara, I've got nothing. But Ruth saw that this is where my destiny is. You see, to produce 30, 60, 100 fold, you have to be intentional. There are radical decisions that you have to make. When the word has been given, the yoke of delay has been destroyed. Be intentional with that way. You lay hold of that way. You, you, Whatever you've been praying for, Father, whatsoever you tell me to do, I have to do it. The enemy will come, the cares of this world, the last of other things, say, no, 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 no. The enemy will come and says, no, I want you to come out of this relationship. Be mindful of the relationships that God bring your way. Lay hold of those relationships. You will produce results. Glory to God. These are the principles of how to produce 30, 60, and 100 fold. I know you are blessed. I am certainly blessed, the glory to God, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you because you are a great God. You are an awesome God. You are a phenomenal God. Lord, I love you. I thank you for every person that has joined in today. We are coming against philosophies that are, are, are rooted in this world. Lord, we pray, Father God, that as we hear your word, it will bring change and transformation. We are praying for the eyes to see, ears to hear, so that we can grow in you and produce the 30, 60, and 100 fold that you desire us to produce in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I bless every person that connected today in Jesus' mighty name. I declare, Father, that as we enter into a new month, the month of November, I speak to the kids of November. I declare, Father God, that the blessing will be made manifest in their lives. Father, no premature death. Lord God, I thank you for this way that you have given us, that yoke of delay in every area of their life. In Jesus' mighty name. The Lord has just given me a word. He says, be careful of something that comes appearing to be what you are praying for. As we enter into the month of the month of, of November, be careful of something that will come that appears to be. Remember the story of um, Abraham. Abraham was given Haggai, and then he ended up having an Ishmaelite. Don't have an Ishmaelite in the month of November. Be careful. Whatever you, you might be excited right now, there might be something happening in your life. God is saying, descend. Wisdom. We were praying for the spirit of wisdom. Have wisdom. You don't want an Ishmaelite. <laughs> Listen to this. It says, whenever you are close to something, always know that the enemy has a decoy. So don't go for the decoy. You are closer than what you think, right? You are closer to that thing. You are closer to his. Don't, don't go for decoy. Don't compromise. Don't compromise in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we come again with the spirit of compromise. We thank you for your wisdom. Lord, I thank you for your glory. I thank you for your power in Jesus' mighty name. You are blessed. Have a wonderful, blessed evening. Till we see you again on Thursday, see you again on Thursday. Remember, now two hour difference. So here, Thursday, it will be 6 p.m. Day in Southern Africa, it will be 20 hundred hours, 8 p.m. So we will see you on Thursday. Have a blessed new month in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah.